What? What up? So, um, I named this uh, little video a very special episode with the Chili Podfather. That was always the cheesy thing that they would do with uh, the um, sitcoms. You know, they'd want to get really serious about something and be a, on a very special episode of the Cosbys. So, um, it's just weird thinking about Cosbys. <laughs> All right, so uh, I know it's been a long time since I've done a video. The last time I did one was in Texas with my brother, and it was a long time before that. So I'm going to do this video, and then I'll do a separate video to kind of get back into things. Uh, what has been happening is, uh, and again, this is why I want to do two separate videos. So uh, I have, I was diagnosed a while ago with severe anxiety attacks, uh, major depression, and PTSD. So every once in a while, it rears its ugly head. And uh, I didn't know what was going on, but I didn't feel like really doing much of anything. And uh, it was weird, though, because generally when I deal with uh, depression, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to be near people. I don't want to go out anywhere. I want to be pretty much left alone and just zone out on something so I don't have to think. And sometimes I know what's going on. Sometimes I don't know what the reason is. I, I don't have to tell you. Uh, it's still a mystery to me. So um, it's it's just been happening. And I didn't realize at this time until I finally keyed in on the fact that I was watching a lot of TV and I was playing uh, one of my video games uh, that I really like. It's called Elite Dangerous. And um, you're pretty much on your own flying um, this ship back and forth between spaceports or, you know, you're uh, hunting down, you know, bounty hunter things and it, but you're all by yourself and it's very expansive and they try to make it as realistic as it can be for traveling through space. So you can spend long time, a long time just kind of traveling from one area to the next. Very good on just zoning out because you have to think of little things here and there and you're watching out for stuff. And it's great for not thinking about other things. So I've been doing that and watching a lot of TV. But I was fine going out places and seeing people. At least I thought I was. Uh, I, didn't, I enjoyed going out to see people. So that's not normal depression stuff for me. So me zoning out on things is just me being lazy and uh, procrastinating. So... Um, I didn't realize what was going on, but I found myself being late to things constantly, which is not me. Normally I show up early and, um, then I started noticing that part of my procrastination was trying to figure out if I wanted to go or not. It, uh, you know, and so little by little, I started keying in on these things. I still don't know. What brought it on? I don't know. Um, some of you know, I haven't really put it out there much, but um, uh, recently I um, had a cousin that suffered very badly from depression and um, uh, she is no longer with us. We'll, we'll put it like that. And... Uh, you know, these, um, I have a brother and two sisters, but, uh, this family, it's, um, the, all the girls, there's, um, you know, just a, a whole bunch of girls and, and one brother and they're like extended family. I mean, it's like having more sisters and, and another brother to me. 
So, um, yeah, it, it hit hard. And um, I freaked out at the airport a little bit um, when we were heading out to uh, uh, for her funeral. And um, it hit me out of nowhere, and I didn't expect it to hit me like that. Uh, and then just recently, um, one of those cousins, uh, her and her husband came down with COVID and they were both in the ICU at separate times. Um, he was asymptomatic for a while and, um, it was really touch and go with her, you know, praying and praying and praying. And she finally came out of it and then he went to the ICU and, um, he had pneumonia, uh, that came on from the COVID, from the respiratory um, issues. They could not keep his oxygen up and uh, they were, you know, almost at a point of um, inducing coma and, and putting, you know, intubating him. But then he, he recovered and he went home for a few days um, after a little bit more uh, therapy for his uh, respiratory condition. And he seemed to be on the mend, and then suddenly he had to go back to the hospital, and a couple of days later he was gone. So that was fairly recent. That was just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so there's just been a lot of stuff going on, you know. Uh, since I got, uh, since I retired, um, I am very open about, you know, these issues with me. Um, I've gotten into lay counseling through church and I had already gotten certified to be a uh, chaplain for police, fire, sports teams, hospitals, whatever. But specifically, I wanted to be a uh, chaplain for the people through my agency that I worked for. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very... Uh, since I understand this stuff a lot, I can really understand what people are going through. And so, I, you know, I don't know. It just, stuff just came on. So I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but it was not easy for me in the, the agency to uh, say anything because you would look, it would really shake the faith of a lot of people around you. And they would figure, oh, well, he can't do his his job, and uh, it would certainly shake the faith of the higher-ups in you, even though they deal with stuff. Uh, but, um, yeah, when I was going through, when my mom was in hospice, and we thought when she came back from the hospital she was going to be gone in about a week. Um, this was like a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, she was... Um, you know, we thought this is, this is it. And then God allowed her to bounce back and, uh, she was on oxygen. She still needed to be in bed most of the time, but, um, it gave her a year, but we never knew. We didn't know we were going to have a year. It could have been any moment things took a turn for the worse. And she had, you know, plenty of issues throughout each day. Um, but you know, I, wasn't sure about going on trips. I wasn't anything. And she's like, you know, Frank, I want you to just, you know, live your life and, and do what you're going to do. So I did. And, you know, of course, you know, we always post pictures of us on trips and everything. And even though I had that constant worry going on in the background, um, you know, I, most people know that if somebody has anxiety uh, or depression, they tend to put on a, a you know, smile and they... Um, don't show it, uh, but I had um, a lieutenant and a captain at work who uh, both were, had been friends, um, and I'm on friendly terms with uh, both of them now. Uh, it's, you know, just kind of over whatever it is, but uh, so both of them were connected to me on Facebook. Well, they would see these pictures and everything, and um, they both questioned whether I was really 
struggling with anything because, you know, hey, look at these pictures and you're out and you're having a good time and you're traveling around and everything. Um, man, that really bothered me. That really, really bothered me. So, um, you know, I mean, people just get this, you know, weird impression of, of how you're supposed to be. Um, and, and until they go through it, they don't really know. So I think my experiences help me with this stuff, but, uh, you know, it's not cut and dry for everybody and it's a little different for every, everyone. And so I don't know what's been going on. I, I just, I don't, I don't know, but I've been working and working since I figured it out the last, uh, three weeks, four weeks. I've been working at trying to figure a way out of wherever I'm at. So uh, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling more like doing these things. I had to go to rehearsal yesterday uh, and uh, I was actually early. <laughs> and um, so and we've got a gig coming up uh, this Saturday. Um, the... 2nd, October 2nd, uh, for the San Jose Rock and Roll Marathon. So we're going to be playing uh, out there. Uh, they're going to have bands, and so we're going to be playing in the morning. So, hey, if you're out there running or, you know, uh, you're like me and you'd rather cheer somebody else on running, <laughs> um, we'll be out there playing. So uh, it'll be in the morning time. We'll be playing like uh, the... Our drummer's band, uh, Vital Signs, is going to be playing right before us for an hour. And then uh, Bootleg, the band I'm in, we're going to be playing for an hour. And then they'll come on and then we'll finish things out and go till about noon. And then all done. So, um, yeah, we'll see, see how it goes. But uh, so, yeah, videos will resume. Uh, I just wanted to kind of let you guys know what's going on. Uh, I, I know it's not funny. <laughs> it's, it's, whoo, that was a great video. Um, but it, it just is what it is, you know, and there shouldn't be any, um, huge mystery to it. It shouldn't have to be a stigma. Um, and, uh, you know, we were addressing this stuff at our church recently and they were talking about addiction and um, they were talking about how people who deal with alcoholism, you know, they say, hello, you know, my name is, and I'm an alcoholic. Uh, I've been, as you know, I've been going to college and, uh, ooh, college boy. Um, and reading this cultural anthropology book. And one of the days these guys went out on ministry and they were talking to people that were, just out on the street and, you know, homeless, whatever. And one of the guys pointed out, saw some scantily clad woman standing out on a corner and said, you know, hey, is that a prostitute? And the other guy said, no, it's not a prostitute. That is a woman who is uh, uh, involved in prostitution. But that whole idea that you're, you're labeling somebody and that becomes who they are. Somebody had a uh, testimony in this last service and my, my heart just broke because they were talking about how, um, you know, they're an alcoholic and, you know, they're not normal compared, you know, to society. Okay. Number one, you're not an alcoholic. You're a person who deals with alcoholism. My mom dealt with that. And, uh, you know, because you have a problem doesn't mean that's, that's going to define who you are. Uh, it may define, certain parameters in your life, but, you know, I'm not, a, you know, an anxious depressive. I am somebody who deals with anxiety and depression and I, I have PTSD, but that's not all who I am. Um, and uh, this lady even said, you know, cause she wasn't normal uh, compared to society standards. Okay. Compared to what society puts out there and says isn't normal because they say, I don't deal with that stuff. I don't have that problem. And yet everybody has a problem. 
So um, it is quite normal that people deal with alcoholism. They deal with depression and anxiety and PTSD and um, addiction of many forms. There's tons, it's not just drugs and alcohol. There are all sorts of things people get addicted to. And um, so, yeah, that's what's been going on. And uh, if, you know, you're stuck in here this long, um, I appreciate it. But uh, I, I feel like I'm coming out the other side and I wanted to let you guys know what's going on. And so we'll, we'll resume. Right after this, I'm going to be doing another video and uh, we'll get going again. And I really appreciate all those who have stuck around and you know waited for new content and hopefully I'll you know be able to keep on this now so uh, I appreciate all your thoughts your prayers your support and uh, love you guys and that's why I said you know uh, find stuff to laugh about be able to enjoy I through this I have not once had any um, feelings of wanting to harm myself or anything like that it's just been kind of a, a rough time. So, um, you know, but I really appreciate everything you guys uh, do and support me and, and all the kind words and everything. And um, uh, hopefully I'll be able to give back here with some uh, good video content. All right. I love you guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other and uh, find stuff to laugh about. Love you all. See you in just a few minutes.